Hey guys, this is the final part of the five part series of Do Not Watch The Lady and the Cage. Please make sure you've gone over and listened to or watched the other four episodes before tuning into this one. I'm also going to insert a trigger warning here for this particular episode as there is mention of suicide, so please be aware that that is mentioned. Thank you for tuning in. If you like the multiple parts episodes, please let me know and I will endeavour to find more for the future. Thank you. The exhibit exists in another time and place, Tony said. The video, any video, is how they catch the lost souls they bring to it, but it could also be a means to escape. The same goes for the pictures you took. He paused, as if drawing from a cigarette or simply struggling to breathe. The exhibitors are the only ones who belong there. People call them devils or trolls or demons, but... The little electrical fuckers are the only natives to this place. The shit you see in the carnival cages, you and all the other poor fuckers being led to the lady, even the guardians holding y'all, they were all brought there by the demons. Tony might not be his real name, I don't know. He claimed he watched the video over a year ago and he was still alive and could still see into the video. He said he learned a great deal about the world of represents. He's learned how to stay alive and maybe how to escape. Except the lady, he continued. No one brought her there and she isn't in a cage. Those bars keep her out, not in. The lady in the cage is no longer a video and I can't look away from it. Every time I shut my eyes, I'm in the zoo, locked between two massive beasts holding me in place. Every blink is a still frame. Every rest is a scene advancing the narrative towards my eventual fate. I don't know if I slept last night and dreamt of the zoo, or if I was awake and simply watched the events play out on the backs of my eyelids. I rose with the sun, grateful for the light, and began trying to arrange the scenario he described to me. My hands shook and my mind raced as I tried to convince myself I could make it. I went back through all of the posts I'd saved trying to see if Tony appeared anywhere, and I found Tony RN almost immediately. Anthony RN and A Right Now looked like they were the same person. None of the accounts had recent activity and I couldn't tie them to real people. I tried the number we'd spoken on and it was dead, just like he said it would be. You need two things, he'd said, and you need them on you at all times. You need one of the pictures you took, whichever one has the best shot of the entire cage. The second thing you need is a key. Any key will do. Your house key, your car key, it doesn't matter, but I suggest you pick a big one. The biggest key you can find, something you won't have any issues keeping on you. I thought about this as I continued combing through the posts I'd saved. As the day wore on, I played his bizarre instructions through my head again and again, practicing clutching a key in my hands, staring down at the picture showing the cage, the ringmaster and the sentry standing beside it as Tyler waited for the lady to take him. Give the picture only to the master of ceremony, the guy next to the cage. Give the key only to the guard on your left. Do not give it to the one on your right. If you do, it won't work. Keep both with you at all times. In your hands is best, but you could drop them. So keep them in your pockets if you don't trust yourself to hold on to them. He finished and paused. When I didn't speak, he asked, You get all that? Yeah, I think I do. You think you do, or you do? Yeah, I say. I got it. Will it actually work? 
staring at my computer screen at all the names, the stories, the obituaries, and the grieving friends and families I hoped to God it would. I felt myself slipping in and out of reality, and the world grew greyer by the moment. My parents spoke in hushed voices below me, and I hadn't left the room yet. Every blink brought me closer. The lady finished another victim, leaving just one person between me and the cage. 24 hours, I thought. I could feel the thunderous vibrations of the demons cheering. The stench of the thick, pungent air stung my nostrils even when my eyes were open. When the lady shrieked as she plunged her fangs into her victim and could feel those around me shudder, I went back through the printouts trying to see if Anthony appeared elsewhere. I searched friends of victims, I looked for posts and stories from roughly a year ago for anyone with the initials RN, anyone named Anthony, Tony, or any other variation. I stared through the grey rising around me as the real world faded, and finally, I found him. Anthony RN is short for Anthony Ronald Nichols, or also known as Ronnie A. Nichols. I found him on Facebook, and by all appearances, it didn't seem like he'd posted or added anything in a year. There were comments of condolences and praise, but they were somehow different from all the others. Some of them expressed hope, others asked how he was doing. Some were very recent. I did more googling and finally found a GoFundMe. It had been opened a year ago, but there were updates in the past two weeks. The picture was of a person in a hospital bed, connected to ventilators, and he looked a lot like Tyler last time I'd seen him, except he didn't seem to be wasting away. The GoFundMe heading read, Ronnie collapsed last week after a brief illness and he's now in a coma. The doctors think there's an issue with his pituitary gland, which regulates growth, but they don't know beyond that. We don't make a lot of money, and Ronnie didn't have any special insurance. Even if you can't spare any money, please send Ronnie your prayers. A few months later, still no updates, but Ronnie's still in a coma. They've tried pulling him out of it, but so far, nothing works. Please, hashtag pray for Ronnie. Finally, the most recent one. This month, Ronnie's EEG showed some improved brain activity, but we're still no closer to answers. I sat back. Ronnie. Tony. The person who had called me, the person I spoke with, has been in a coma for a year? I leaned back in my chair and rubbed my temples. How could I trust this guy? What choice do you have? My thoughts interrupted me, and then my phone rang. It was another number I didn't recognise. I answered. Hello? The voice was familiar, but I couldn't place it. My name's Mark. I think we met yesterday? Where? I asked. At Easy Photo in Midland Park. I developed some pictures for you. Oh, hi, I said, confused. Hey, sorry to bother you, but hey, I was wondering if you could tell me about that movie. What is it? Movie? Yeah, in the pictures. It looked like it was on a TV. Can you tell me the name of it? It's just a... it's like an internet thing. Honestly, now is not a good time, man. The world wobbled around me and I could hear footsteps that could have been inside the video or in the real world. Yeah, like I said, I'm sorry, it's just... this is kind of weird, but is it some kind of prank or something? What? No. What do you mean? It's just weird, man. A video that looks a lot like it keeps popping up on my phone. My heart stopped. What do you mean it's popping up on your phone? Like in a pop-up or something. I closed it a few times because I thought it was spam, but a video started playing. It looked a lot like what was in those pictures, man. I couldn't speak, and there was silence for a moment. Look, man, if it's a prank, can you just lay off? I have pretty gnarly anxiety and this isn't helping. The pictures. I'd shown him photos of the zoo, and now it had him too. 
I'm sorry, man, I stammered. I, I, I wish it was. He started to say something, but I hung up and shut my phone off, swearing to myself that I'd help him if I could escape. I clutched the picture and key and started running the plan through my head again. The world went greyer, the chattering echoed off the walls of my room, and then suddenly I heard the sound of a door opening. Adam? My mother said. I jolted, turned, and saw my parents standing in my doorway. I tried to say something, but I couldn't speak. Adam, you need to come downstairs with us. I looked at both of them and shook my head. I... I can't. I... I just need to stay in here. My words were broken and scattered. I could hear myself speaking, but I couldn't be sure they could. My father stared at me for a moment and finally nodded. Okay he said, and then turned to my mother. Okay, I told you this would happen. She burst into tears, and he dragged her away by the shoulder, and she wept as he did. I'm sorry, Adam. I'm so sorry, baby. For a moment, I felt relief, and I set down the key and stood to close the door when I heard heavy footsteps coming down the hall. My mother cried harder, and the stomping moved closer, and the fear in me rose until finally a massive state trooper appeared at the door, and then another one behind him, and then a paramedic behind them. Adam, I want you to stay calm for me, the big cop said. You're going to come with us, okay? I screamed and tried to close the door, but he easily brushed me aside and came in. I turned to run. I don't know where, but his hands were on me and I winced as he clamped down on the tender area the sentries were already holding. In desperation, I reached for the key on my desk, but I collapsed on the floor. I fought like hell as the other came in, and as the big one's knee went onto my back, in a final act of desperation, I shoved the pitcher down my pants seconds before they cuffed me. I'm in a padded cell, a prelude to the cage, holding me for my final hours as the world around me disappears and I leave it forever. I don't know what time it is, and when I close my eyes, I can see the lady sucking the glowing life force from her final victim. I still have the picture. I somehow made it through the search before they brought me to this clinic, but the key is gone, and with it, the last of my hope. In the zoo... My arms are tightly clenched by the sentries on either side of me. I looked up at each of them and their rocky features. Their skin looks like cement, the lines and creases of their faces like the permanent edges of geological formations. I try to distinguish the two, but I cannot. They look identical, but I know the one on the left would be my salvation if I had a key to hand to him. The cell I'm in has soft walls, a cot, a plastic toilet and sink, and a panel hissing heated air and steam into the room. I briefly think about plugging up the toilet, sticking my head in and drowning myself. I think about it hard and try to play it out to test myself and see if I have the constitution. I pull at the sheets on the cot and wonder if I could hang myself. There's a commotion in the cage, and the lady howls, tossing the dried remains of her meal to the ground where it disintegrates. The floor of her cage is littered with such remains, all that's left of a thousand meals, a thousand ruined souls. The crowd of demons howl in approval, their teeth reciprocating in steel applause. And then, in an instant, they're silent. They turn to me. Every one of them, with their hollow eyes looking at me, their empty, avoid mouths agape. I breathe in the stench of the place, and with a lurch, the sentinels drag me forward. It's time. I pull at the sheets, but they're held down fast. There's a banging at the door, and someone calls through that I'll be in the jacket if I don't settle down. I look around the room again, and think about drowning myself again. Steam hisses out of the small, flat radiator in the wall. I could bash my head against it. Would that do it? I know I can't struggle, but 
My body goes completely rigid and my feet drag on the ground as they bring me to that horrible master of ceremony. His skin is so repulsively thin and dead, and his eyes look like they've shriveled into his head. I command my arms to work my hands into the front of my pants for the picture, but they won't move, and I'm frozen in terror. I move closer to the radiator and put my hand on it. It's sheet metal, and I try to envision myself bringing my head down on it. I think about the force it would take to cause brain death. Would that even work? It's metal, but it doesn't feel strong enough to actually defeat my cranium and end my life. I feel around the edges and find a loose spot in the panel and slide it off. I got closer and looked to the side, and there was the lady at the bars of her cage. The embers in her eyes glow like tiny suns floating in the eternity and infinity of space, and I finally see that the sockets aren't empty. Large glass lenses cover them, protecting the tiny optical nerve running back into her skull. Like cameras, I think to myself. Behind the panel, there are pipes and a heat exchanger. The fins are thin slices of soft metal that flex when I touch them. The lines feeding them steam are too recessed into the wall to give me access. I feel around them, and the world wobbles and then falls away, and I slip back into the zoo as my fingers find a tiny metal object between the pipe and the wall. I find my strength, and my right arm tightens enough to find and extract the crumpled photo. I pull it out. And as much as I can, I push it forward. Wait! I screamed, but he doesn't react. Here! Take this! The Master of Ceremony ignores me, and his long, branch-like arm extends towards the cage. I shake my head and squeeze my eyes shut and visualise the real world. I think about the cell my body is in and open my eyes. The pipe in front of me leads from the radiator to a junction in the wall. I can make out something shiny, something sticking out of it. I manage to get my fingers around it and give it a yank. Nothing. I wiggle it, turn it, pull it again, and finally, it comes out in my hand. The world greys and goes away for the last time. I struggle against the sentinels, but they're too strong. I thrash, lean forward and look down, trying to see what's in my left hand. It has rounded, metal edges. I can feel it. I pull harder, look down, and finally see it. Oh god, I think. With a rounded handle and hexagonal female piece, in my hand is a bleeder key for a radiator. A key! It's still a fucking key! I turn to my left and scream at the sentinel. I have a key! You can have this key! There is no change in his face, but finally, I work my arm free enough to press the key into his free hand. Take it! His fist closes around it, and the grip on my shoulder weakens enough for me to lunge forward and shove the picture into the Master of Ceremony. He froze, and suddenly both sentinels released me. The tiny, grotesque eyes looked down slowly at the picture, then back at me. The smile disappeared from his face, and the long arm began to retract from the cage. The sentinel holds up the key to the Master of Ceremony. Yes! I yelled. Take it! Please! For the love of God, take it! Let me go! You have to let me go. He looks to the sentinel on my left and nods to him. And with an outstretched arm of stone, it hands him the key. The sentinel on my right turns and marches away towards the rear of the procession as I collapse to my knees and weep. Please, please just let me go. I want to go. I want to live. The Master of Ceremony closes his hand around my key, and for a moment, it seems like he's squeezing it, trying to crush it, and then he opens his hand, and it's gone. 
Suddenly, an invisible force lifts me to my feet and I feel something on my back. I try to turn and look, but I can't look, but my neck has frozen solid. Metal clanking rises from behind me and I feel chains wrapping around me and the master of ceremony taps my chests where the chains join and mate, locking themselves. What's happening? I shout in a voice I don't recognise. What are you doing to me? The remaining sentinel steps forward as the steel tendrils wrap around me from behind. The master of ceremony produces a key in his hand, another key, and slides it into the sentinel's chest. A great clanking sound of a great lock being unlatched rings out, and the chains around the sentinel begin falling away as the new ones wrap around me. The stone face begins to crumble, and underneath, a human starts to emerge. As the chains tighten and my body is encased in concrete, I see him. It's Ronnie. Ronnie was the sentinel. He begins to rise over the crowd into the grey above us, and, as he does, he mouths the words, I'm sorry. That's the last thing my eyes see before crystalline structures cover them. Every cell in my body stretches and turns to stone as I grow into my new sentinel body. I turn and march down the procession towards the rear, my power of will and bodily control gone, and every function this body performs under the instinct of the zoo and not my own will. I reach the rear of the procession and wait as the man appears in the sky and slowly floats down to the surface before his feet gently touch the ground. The pair of sentries ahead of me raise their arms and ever so gently close their hands around the new captive's shoulders. Then, slowly, he turns and looks at me. It's Mark. He developed my film. I brought him here. In time, that grip will tighten, never to release until he is fed to the lady in the cage. In time, another one will appear and I will do the same. I will do this again and again until I can escape like Ronnie, if I can escape. My body is connected to ventilators now. My parents pray and beg me to come out of the coma they think I'm in. My mind is still here, and, in flashes, I can see the outside world through the internet. And sometimes I can deliver messages like this one. Maybe someday I'll be able to connect with the captive held by my right hand the way Ronnie did. Perhaps he'll bring me a key, and I'll be able to escape this hell. Until that day, all I can do is warn you and beg you do not watch the lady in the cage. Thank you guys, ghouls, and girls for watching. Please feel free to connect with me on my Discord server, and if you want to watch me live, check out my Twitch channel. I am very active on both platforms and even have scheduled streams. I would absolutely love to see you there. Links to my other social media platforms are in the description below. Stay, 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 stay.